Uh, let me welcome to the stage Arusha Chowdhury Khanna from Loom Kappa. So, uh, namaste. I'm Arushi, actually, uh, from Loom Katha. And um, yes, that's me as an Indian bride, but this is not a showreel of my wedding album. The reason I have this photo up there is to draw your attention to the sari I'm wearing, a 100% handwoven handloom sari that would retail in India for about $350. This is the handloom weaver Asma. She's a single mom, 22-year-old single mom with four kids. She works about eight hours a day and would take roughly seven days to produce a sari like this. She earns $30. That is not even 10% of the end market value of the product she makes. There are over 5 million textile weavers in India, like Asma, over 47% of whom live below the poverty line. While we're very proud of our textile heritage, we have over 150 different types of handcrafted textiles. The truth is that 900 weavers committed suicide in the province of Andhra Pradesh alone in the last five years. So why is it that despite toiling from dawn to dusk, their hard work simply does not pay? The answer is uh, somewhat complex. Asma is dependent on an integrated network of intermediaries to not just make, but also market her product. Starting from the yarn supplier, the dyer, the drafting agent, the bobbing winding agent, the graphist, the warp setter. And these are just the service providers before she has made her product. After making it, she is again dependent on a hierarchy of traders, distributors, and retailers to get her product to the end consumer. The problem is further compounded when even one of these agents stops providing services. So for example, today most high quality yarn is produced only in bulk for large textile mills. An individual weaver like Asma is either forced to use substandard input or purchase it at a high premium from the black market. But what if all of these myriad services were bundled into one? What if she simply had to go to one access provider for all of her service needs. That is Loom Katha. We set up Loom Katha in late of 2016 after nearly a decade of working in rural India. Our mission, to ensure that greater economic value of the end product goes directly back to weavers like Asma. By integrating all of the service requirements that weavers like her have, we ensure a more efficient and streamlined supply chain this, of course, leads to a reduction in the cost of production and an increase in the income to the weaver. We've done two pilots in Rajasthan and, Madhya and uh, Maharashtra and been able to prove that the weaver earns double or a 2x increase in income within the first year itself through our model. So I'm just going to walk you through our pilot in uh, Maharashtra. That was a defunct... Um, textile mill, uh, sorry, a defunct handloom uh, mill that we uh, took over in March. We worked tirelessly for about two months to set in place all of the pre-weaving requirements needed. The weavers came in two months ago, and uh, we've uh, been able to show that they can now earn from $3 a day to $6 a day. We branded their product, and they're presently sampling for a high fashion brand in Charleston, USA. So that's really uh, Loom Katha in action. Uh, we started Loom Katha with $1,500 of my own savings. Uh, we raised uh, about $10,000 uh, through an acumen competition a few months later. And to date, we've done $40,000 in sales. We work with close to 100 weavers in four provinces of India, and we have customers in nine countries across the world. Our product line includes uh, women's apparel, scarves, and stationeries. And we are proud to say that all of our products are 100% handmade, price competitive, and green, because handloom production by nature is a no-fuel method of production. So while we serve close to 100 weavers today, our mission is to serve 500,000 weavers by 2025. So please join me in furthering this mission and bringing in a, a new sort of textile revolution of the 21st century. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and now let's open it to our judges for five minutes of questions. What's your plan for scaling up from 100 weavers to 500,000 weavers in uh, that period of time? So it's iterative. Uh, we basically, at the, mo uh, at the moment, uh, we looked at uh, piloting across different types of textile crafts to see if our model works. So we, uh, in Rajasthan and Maharashtra, for example, we have very different crafts, but we've been able to uh, sort of streamline and uniformize the process across different crafts. So we're looking at first increasing the depth within these four areas that we work. So going to 100,000 weavers within these four clusters and then moving forward uh, in clusters that are naturally synergistic uh, to the ones that we are working in. Uh, you said that uh the original problem was that uh, the weavers would only get uh, less than 10 percent, 30 dollars, instead of uh, the intermediaries would uh, take like 350. Yes. Are there ways in which you could also help these to make sure that you get rid of uh, intermediaries using other methods so that they can also get more than just uh, the 10 percent? Yes. So basically, uh, what we are looking at right now in our pilot clusters is they've, they've moved from 10 percent to 20 percent. And hopefully by the next year, they will move to 30 percent. Again, as I said, uh, it is iterative. So we first looked at the pre-weaving intermediaries. How can we remove all of them by being the single window clearance for the weaver? And at the marketing end, again, so typically a weaver goes to their local trader, goes to the, which goes to the district level trader, which goes to the city, which then goes to urban markets and exports. So we are looking at can we bypass that entire chain of uh, local traders and go directly to the retailers in urban areas as well as outside of India. So we've cut down, at, as on date, we've cut down about 60% of the intermediaries and hopefully uh, as we scale and we're able to build competency in-house, uh, we will remove uh, all of them entirely. Uh, does your business model include any efforts to build the skills um, of the weavers themselves so that eventually their products could be even more uh, valuable or even more marketable? So uh, in India, the problem is the weavers are highly skilled. So they're used to weaving with a very high level of complexity. The problem is they're forced to use substandard input, which means that though there's a high skill, the product is of inferior quality. So while our focus is more on looking at how we can uh, build capacity given their skill level, we do provide some amount of training in terms of uh, market trends and uh, say color combinations and things that are working in the urban market today. But uh, skill per se is something we have not found a need to enhance. And so, what's your process for selling the product? Can you talk about that a little bit? So uh, the first year, we honestly didn't have a process. Our idea was to hit everything in sight. So uh, you know, we did, we did trade shows in Tokyo, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, uh, four cities of India. We did an online site. We partnered with third party online retailers. And we've done, I mean, we've pretty much tried everything that it takes to sell a product. But I think going forward, we've been able to see what works and doesn't work. And what we're focusing on is a one institutional partnerships with foreign organizations because the margins are higher than in India. And secondly, building our own online presence to directly access the customer. Fantastic. OK, a round of applause for Arushi. Thank you. Great job.